Hello, my name is James Barger, and I'm the assistant professor of saxophone at West Texas A&M University, and I'm here today to give you some practice tips for this summer's WTAMU band camp audition music for high school alto and baritone saxophones. Now, tenor players, don't go anywhere just yet. Many of the tips will apply to you as well. First and foremost, be sure that you are practicing your fundamentals every day. It is during this portion of our practice that we learn how to best control the sound of our instrument, as well as to navigate its technical complexities. For me, I try to spend approximately 60% of my practice time working on fundamentals and 40% working on specific repertoire. So what goes into an effective fundamental practice session? For me, I work to incorporate these elements into each day's practice. Tone, technique, and tongue. To remember easily, I refer to these as the three T's. A great introductory tone exercise is to simply sustain every note on the saxophone at a moderately slow tempo. I like to play whole notes at 60 beats per minute. Don't just zone out and go through the motions, but try to listen carefully to your sound at all times. Is it warm, bright, dark, full, thin, buzzy, or fuzzy? Does each note match with those surrounding it, or do some notes stick out in tone or volume? Strive each day to bring every note closer to your ideal sound. As you advance, incorporate the study of overtones and vibrato into your tone studies. For technique, most of my attention is spent on scales, arpeggios, or other technical patterns, such as scales and thirds or other intervals. It is crucial to practice your technical exercises with a metronome in order to instill good sense of time in your fingers. Begin very slowly and gradually speed up as you gain comfort and control. Focus on connecting the notes with a steady stream of air. Keep in mind, the only thing different between our long tones and our scales is that our fingers are moving. In this audition etude, being very familiar with your scales in the keys of D major, G major, and F major will be to your advantage. Oh, and don't forget the chromatic scale. This is also very important. Because the audition etude is in compound time, it is important to work on your scales using a 6-8 subdivision. In order to address the tongue, try applying common articulation patterns from the etude to your scales. Work to keep the articulation light, using the least amount of tongue necessary to achieve the desired result. Before you jump into learning the audition music, take some time to number the measures, identify phrases and mark your breaths, and mark common alternate fingerings. In this etude, you could play using four measure phrases or eight measure phrases, depending on your tempo and comfort level. In my performance, I played eight measure phrases in the theme and the first variation, and switched to four measure phrases in variations two and three. Regardless of which you choose, be sure to mark your breaths and observe these every time you practice. Dynamic markings are also an incredibly important aspect of this etude and should be exaggerated. When in doubt, record yourself playing the piece and ask yourself if you can truly hear dynamic contrast. When learning a new piece of technical music, I like to start well below the marked tempo. For this etude, I might suggest beginning at half tempo so that you can incorporate dynamics and style markings from the very beginning. 
I find this to be much more beneficial than trying to add dynamics and style later on in the process. Remember the adage, slow and steady wins the race. This is true when we learn music as well. A quick word on style. The word staccato means to detach. It does not mean short. There are many staccato notes in this etude. Make them bouncy and light, springing forward to the next note. Not choppy, short, and devoid of life. The word accent means to stand out from that which surrounds it. The accents in variation three can be achieved by emphasizing the note with a slightly stronger airstream or by slightly elongating the note. Experiment with both of these approaches and pick the one that sounds appropriate to you. In my performance, I combined both of these approaches into my own interpretation of the music. In technical passages, determine your alternate fingerings early on and mark them from day one. In most cases, the best fingering option is the one that is the most efficient, requiring the least amount of movement. I would suggest that you mark the following fingerings. In measure 13, use the bis B flat fingering for both B flats. In measure 18, use the chromatic or the fork F sharp fingering. In measure 29, use the chromatic or side fingering for both C natural and B flat. In measure 31, use the chromatic or side fingering for C natural and B flat, and use the chromatic or fork fingering for the F sharp in B2. Part of a mature saxophone sound is the use of vibrato on long notes. Saxophone vibrato is produced by the slight raising and lowering of the jaw while sustaining a steady airstream. Practice your vibrato daily as a part of your tone fundamentals and add it to the etude when you are comfortable. In this piece, I would suggest adding vibrato to any note longer than an eighth note. I usually practice vibrato with the metronome using a triplet subdivision. I begin at 60 beats per minute and gradually speed up to 110 or 120 beats per minute. Finally, be aware of common intonation problems on the saxophone. In this etude, there are an abundance of middle C sharps and middle Ds. C sharp tends to be very flat on most saxophones, while middle D tends to be very sharp. The use of an alternate C sharp fingering can help with this. I personally like to add the octave key and the third finger on my left hand whenever I can to help bring up the pitch of the C sharp. For middle D, it is helpful to think of playing with a tall embouchure, or one that creates a lot of vertical space between the back teeth. Work on playing both of these notes, as well as other problematic notes, with a tuning drone in order to hear and feel what it is like to play true to pitch. I hope that this video gives you some ideas in approaching your practice sessions and this audition music in particular. If you have questions, please do not hesitate to ask. Leave a comment below or send an email to jbarger at wtamu.edu and I would love to help you further. Stay well and happy practicing.